believe for extraordinary intervention. This is something we all need and can receive. In Psalm 91, verse 11 and 12, it says, For he will give his angels charge of you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. There are angels amongst us. Sometimes we see them and do not even realize it. In Hebrews chapter 13, it says, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Wow! I mean, we need to be careful with our attitudes and our manners as we interact with people we do not know in just the general course of a common day, as you never know. At other times, though, we cannot see them, but we might sense their presence because they've been assigned by God to guide us and protect us and help us. Sometimes you neither see them nor feel them, but if you're walking in faith with the word of God in your lips, they're activated. Angels are mentioned 273 times in the Bible. So there's ample information and invitation for us to explore knowledge of angelic beings. We know the job description for an angel includes extraordinary intervention in human affairs. Some of these are providing. God used angels to provide food for many in the Bible, including a woman by the name of Hagar, who was cast out of her family unit with her young son and found herself in a desert, starving and without water. And angels came and provided food and provided water, and God sent a message of encouragement to Hagar. And then we see the protecting influence of angels with the story of Daniel in the lion's den and how God's angels shut the mouths of the lions and protected Daniel from physical harm. Then they deliver, delivering and getting people out of danger once they're in it, like Peter in jail and the angel escorted him out. Angels encourage. Angels are said to have encouraged the apostles to keep preaching. And they are messengers that bring messages at times to God's people, as they did with Paul when he was in a big storm on a ship and the angel of the Lord came and said that they were going to survive it. What about those unexpected moments, though, when people we love pass into eternity because of a sudden sickness or a tragic accident? Why does God seem to protect some and not others? Well, I have some authority to speak my beliefs on this because my husband and I had one child, a son, the love of our lives. On what was to be his wedding day at the tender age of 21, he died to this earth. Now, I had seen God's extraordinary intervention in protecting him from the time he was born as a baby healing him from sicknesses, delivering him from drowning, saving him from premature death on numerous occasions. Why not this time? You know, I thought about my friends in South America, beautiful missionaries, and their little nine-year-old son went to get a hamburger at a stand after a service on Sunday, and a driver lost control of a semi-truck and struck him and killed him. You know, all of us have ever either lived these traumas or we know people who have lived them. We ask ourselves, why do they happen? You know, I don't have an answer for this, but in my grief, I heard the voice of my shepherd Jesus Christ saying to my heart, Sandra, this is the time to use your faith and trust me and entrust him to me. This I do know, that a God-given task of angels, as I read the Bible, is to care for believers at the moment of their death. We find it in Luke 16, in the story of Lazarus and the rich man. We read that angels carried the spirit of Lazarus to Abraham's bosom when he died. So, divine intervention, my son did not leave here alone. All those who fear and trust in the Lord shall be guarded and protected. 
Nothing will separate us from God's love, not life or death, things present or things to come. Be careful, though, because the Bible doesn't give us permission nor precedent to worship angels, to seek to contact them or command them. They're not our little errand boys. They are God's holy elect angels. They don't answer when we call them. They respond to the command of God. Psalm 103.20 says, Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. We speak to God who sends his angels. Be very careful with any false fascination with angels. Remember, our adversary Satan is a fallen angel and is lying in wait to deceive. His goal is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But we pray to God, our Father, in Jesus' name, and we ask for his direction and for his protection. God is good, and his mercy endures forever. Believe for extraordinary intervention.